Oh yeah. No, I agree. Sure. No, I can I can totally see that. Oh, hey guys. I uh, haven't seen it in a while. We've had the little quarantine thing, but we're back in business. Uh, I am waiting for, looking for you to turn in your case study questions. And that case study is the actual case study that's going to be on the first day of the IB business exam. So if you can get those back to me, I want you to read through the case study, come up with five different questions you think IB might ask on the exam itself, and then I will put that together and it'll be a nice uh, review sheet for you. And it's worked in years past, it'll work like a charm again. If you have questions, email me on that. I sent that to you, I believe it was on Tuesday. All right, so further contacts, we're kind of straightening things out here in terms of what we're doing, contacting students. I will be contacting you from now on directly Tuesdays and Thursdays. Those will also be the days that your assignments are due. So I will send you a contact on Thursday. You'll have a longer assignment that is due Tuesday. When I contact you Tuesday, it'll be a shorter assignment for Thursday. These are not going to be frivolous. These are not going to be just busy work. It's going to be stuff that works us toward being ready for the IV exam. All right. The market's been crazy. Don't look too closely at your stocks. Think about buying if you got some cash. Um, remember, this is a tough time for our economy. This is a tough time for our country. There's going to be people laid off. There's going to be people struggling to find work. Um, so those who have cash and are buying are obviously going to be doing, doing well in the future. Uh, but let's not forget, let's pray for, for those that are affected adversely. Um, and it's all of us, particularly. I can tell you my retirement savings, thank God I don't need it now um, because it's, it ain't pretty and it isn't going to be for a while. Um, so say a prayer. Um, beyond that, let's get started. So what I'd like you to do for Tuesday is complete the case study called Fun Games. It's in your book, um, but I am also going to put it on the line, online on our website. So I will upload it there. So look for fun games, click it. There's uh, parts A, B, and C. A, pretty basic. B is gonna be everything that we're doing now, which is the sales forecasting. And then C is a, is a longer, should be at least a paragraph uh, where you're going to be evaluating um, forecasting, sales forecasting. What are the benefits? What are the drawbacks? Okay. So part B, that's what we're going to go through today. Now, the example that I have is on our PowerPoint as well. Uh, we're going to do three-year moving averages for sales forecasting. So this is also in your book on page uh, 275. And sorry, I just got some notes here. I want to make sure I'm hitting everything. Contact days. Um, the other thing, feel free to pause this video and go back and replay it just to kind of understand what's going on. If you have questions, email me uh, or text me. Happy to uh, address any questions as always. So, okay. Um, so the three year moving average, the way we figure that out, we've got years one through eight, actual sales are in black. The trend or moving averages are gonna be here. The way we figured out, so the moving average that we put at year two is had by adding years one, two, and three actual sales just 400 plus 600, that's 1,000, plus 800, that's 1,800. And then we divide it by three, we find out the moving average. So 1,800 divided by three is, hello, 600. Very good, I know you knew that. All right, a little tougher here, 600 plus 800 plus 650. We're looking at 1,400 plus six is 2,000 plus 50 is 2050 or 2,050. Divided by three, that gives us uh, 683, I did not do that at my, in my head, by the way. I don't want to show off. All right, um, that goes here. So again, we're taking three years, we're adding them, dividing them by three, and then we're placing that trend number underneath that middle year. So go ahead on your own and figure these out. At least do a couple of them, see if you're doing this right before you do the case study, okay? But here are your numbers, 600, 683, 717, 733, 833, and the grand. All right, now next, and oh boy, it might be tough to see. Hopefully you can see this. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take 600 and 600. We're gonna subtract them and find the difference. Obviously the difference is zero. And let me get a darker pen here, zero. So for year two, our variation, the difference between sales and the trend 
is zero, okay? So now let's say 800 minus 683, and the answer is 117. 650 minus 717, the answer is minus 67, all right? 700 minus 733, it's minus, or mi negative 33. 850 minus 833 is a positive 17, and 950 minus 1,000 is a negative 50. Now what you're going to do is add all these up. So you've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. You're going to add those numbers, and then we're going to divide it by 6, and that will give us our cyclical variation. Okay. So if we add all those up, it comes out to 33, and it sounds like it's really low number, but that's because you're, you're combining numbers, some are positive and some are negative. So the, the end result is the number 33. We divide it by 6 and we get 5.5. The reason I drew this out, this is all supposed to be in the case study in the book. This is all supposed to be in thousands, three zeros. So what you do is you take the decimal point and you move it over three times to the right. So there's one, two, and three, okay? That would actually give you 5,500. All right. So now we've figured all this out, and now they want us to graph it. So let's do it. Ready for this? Whoa, look at that. All right. By the way, this is number one. I want to apologize for the audio on here. I know there's a hum on there. It's my computer. I apologize. Uh, number two, it's really weird giving you this lesson this way because all I'm doing is looking at myself and... Uh, I'd rather look at all of you before I look at this mug. Anyhow, okay, so we have to graph, graph this. On the y-axis, we have sales, and I'm doing it in 200 um, increments, okay? So 204, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 1600. Down here, we have years, and shame on me, I should mark that, so this should be dollars, okay? This should say years, always mark your axes. Okay, so the black are the numbers whoop, the, that we got in the sales row. Okay, so I graphed that already. I lined it up. Year one was 400 in sales. Boom. There's your, your mark. Okay. The red is a graphic of the trend or the moving average, the three-year moving average. So I went through and did that already for us as well. Um, do one yourself, see if it looks the same as the one I made. Uh, just make sure that you're doing it correctly, okay? Um, by the way, I hope all my numbers are right because I came up with those. They don't, the book doesn't give me a, a teacher's edition. So hopefully those are right on. Let me know if they're off. If they're off. Um, finally, we have uh, what's called an extrapolation. So we had a moving average all the way, let's see, through year seven, okay? Year seven, we extrapolate out. Um, all you're going to do in extrapolation is just take this line and continue it on the same slope that it had been the last couple of years. So I used a dotted line for that because that is an anticipation or a prediction of our sales. Now, after extrapolating, what you do is you take the cyclical variation, and this came out to 5.5, which is a minuscule amount. Sometimes it's significant, but you would add that to your extrapolation point, and so it moves it up just a little higher, and it ends up being where that blue dot is. Okay. So what we're looking for is a graph that has your actual sales, all right, a graph that has your, your trend numbers as well, okay, and then finally you're going to take your cyclical variation, extrapolate out and take the cyclical and either move it up or down based on whatever number you got. So give it a shot. Um, I want everyone to, to give this a, a full try. Give me a full answer on it. Uh, I'm not going to bury anybody uh, grade-wise if you give me your best effort. Please do your own work. You've got plenty of time to work on this. This thing should take no longer than, than a simple class period, 45 minutes or so. And if you have questions in the meantime, don't wait until Monday night to do this. Hop on it Saturday or Sunday. Just take a little block of time and work on it. Um, it shouldn't be all that hard. Um, that's it. Miss you guys. We'll talk at you soon. I will get back at you again on Tuesday. 
Until then, take care.